evening and welcome to Meticulous Moments. My name is Jonita Kapp. You can reach me at meticulousmacarons at gmail.com or find me on LinkedIn. Since the COVID-19 pandemic hit the globe, I've had the wonderful privilege to meet a wide array of fantastic individuals. These individuals have truly touched my life in so many positive ways. Amongst this group of people, there are authors, public speakers, life coaches, poets, leaders and visionaries. They are the unsung heroes of our time. Therefore, I decided to start the Meticulous Moments movement out of a sense of my gratitude. It is my way of giving back to the community. Let us share and reshare their stories in an effort to build a better society. Good day, Meticulous Moments audience. Thank you so much for joining us for yet another vibrant session on the Meticulous Moments podcast, where we facilitate community upliftment through leadership development. And today, we have the wonderful privilege of spending time with the fabulous Kim Blake. Kim says the following. She says, I began training in martial arts at the age of 42. I'm currently 60. My interest in martial arts began at the age of 13 when an after-school martial arts class was offered at my junior high school. Unfortunately, my father wouldn't consent because he said girls do not participate in competitive sports. This was very hard for me to accept, but I still had my love for Bruce Lee and martial arts films. It wasn't until I was 41 when I was posed with the question by my friend and mentor, Dr. Brenda Lloyd-Jones. But what is stopping you from achieving this dream now? So with the realization of having nothing to stop me, I enrolled in karate class at Apollo's martial arts right after my 42nd birthday. I'm now working on a 5th degree black belt in karate, kickboxing and Japanese jiu-jitsu under multi-world champion Dale Apollo Cook. I'm also a 2nd degree black belt in Ketsugo under the lineage of Harold Brosios. I'm also a black belt in BJJ, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, under Master Carlos Machado. What a wonderful, wonderful interview we had together. Kim is such a beautiful person at heart. She has such a servant leadership that just exudes from her. And it is just so wonderful to have her on meticulous moments where she added a lot of value. With that, we would love to welcome our special guest, Kim Blake. Welcome, Kim, and thank you. Good day, Meticulous Moments audience. Thank you so much for joining us for another vibrant session and discussion on leadership. And today, we have the wonderful privilege of spending time with the amazing Kim Blake. How are you, Kim? I am great. I am great. Uh, just getting back. Um, from an amazing weekend with some amazing uh, martial artists, um, some living legends in the arts. That's amazing. I saw the posts on Facebook, lovely photos, lovely video footage. Would you like to elaborate a little bit on that? I saw there were tables and there were some martial arts demonstrations as well. What was the event called? It was called the um, Sport Karate Museum um, Living Legend Celebration, um, a roast for the great Roy Kerban, uh, I should say Judge Roy Kerban. And um, he was uh, the founder of the two-point rule, um, the kick rule um, in sport karate. So it was good to meet him it was a super show um it was hosted by um professor gary lee um who's a um, old school um sport karate um he's known for his hard hitting and and just getting in there and and roughing it up a little bit so it was a super show they had um <clears throat> tables um for people to to present or 
offer their uh, martial arts um, products. Um, Randy got a chance to um, to be there um, where he promoted his book and his um, documentary. Um, there was a Kata War um, for the elite black belts, and um, you have to have at least 100 um, first place to be invited. My goodness. Um, yeah. So there were a lot of um, people winning awards, um, lifetime achievement, um, yeah. living, Le living legend awards, um, being inducted into the um, United States Hall of Fame, the International um, Hall of Fame for martial artists. Um, there was demonstrations um, given um, over the arts. There are people presenting, you know, what they do best. Um, it was a really great time uh, meeting people. And, of course, there was a dinner. Um, there were seminars. Um, yeah. So it was a fun-filled two days. Oh, my goodness. It sounds like a phenomenal, phenomenal weekend. Even better, you know, than, than I saw on Facebook is to hear your rendition of it. That is just amazing. Thank you so much. Now, we've had a lovely virtual coffee. We've spoken on Messenger. I've interviewed Randy before, so I feel like I know you and Randy very well. But for the audience members who've never met you, would you just like to introduce yourself to them? Yes. Yeah. Good morning. I am Kim Blake. Um, I'm known by Sensei, Master, pr Professor, um, simply because I have um, three black belts in three different um, wow. disciplines. So I have a black belt in karate, a uh, fifth dan or fifth degree. Um, I have a second degree in Ketsuko, which is an American um, jiu-jitsu. Um, it consists of um, joint manipulation. Um, yeah. And I have, which is one of my favorite because it took so long to get and a first degree in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. That is simply amazing. Wow, Kim. <laughs> but first and most, I am a Christian. So, Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's the most important part. I mean, it, when you started saying this black belt and this black belt and this black belt, I thought to myself, that right there is a lot of dedication and a lot of hard work. So I commend you on that. That is absolutely fantastic. Now, uh, we... Um, discussed leadership previously and I always say to people because I've, I've been in the ministry I've been in the martial arts world I've been in the corporate world as well and especially in the corporate world we learn about self-leadership we learn about leading others we learn about leading the corporation and then after you've mastered those skills you go to uh, you know leadership of the of the stakeholders but to me I want to ask you because to have achieved those two first dance and the first dance in Brazil, uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as well. It takes discipline. It takes self-leadership. Where, where do you experience that that journey of your started? Because I know we discussed that, you know, when you started, but for the audience, where did that self-leadership journey start that is just elevating us today after all, uh, you know, you've done? It actually started... I had to think about this. It happened yeah. when a little girl walked up to me at a tournament. She yeah. was just, you know, overthralled um, because I was, um, I wore a pink gi. You know, she was little. She was brought to this, yeah. this tournament where um, she, she probably was forced to, you know, to punch somebody <laughs> <laughs> into your father and she saw that I was doing it um I, I, I used to wear pink geese <laughs> all the time so, uh, her her dad um after that he would walk up to me and and um said how much 
I meant um, to this this little girl. So it wasn't something that I, I wanted to do. I was sort of forced out there because my uh, personality is to stay in the background and do the best me that I can be to help <laughs> to help. Yeah. But I in, in front of an um different um ladies to all the way down to girls um just to inspire them um in that way that is beautiful absolutely beautiful and we also talked about the fact that you started i mean look at the success that you've that you've achieved and yet you started at a later age in your life i actually had someone find me the other day and they asked me they told me they were in their cities and they mm -hmm. asked me if it was too late for them to start with karate. And I said, what? It's never too late to start with karate. So will you tell the audience when you started so that we can generate some excitement here for those who want to start that think maybe they are too old now? <laughs> well, the, the thought came, actually, I, I started my journey at, 30, at the age 13 but it did not begin until I was 42. Wow. Meaning there was a gap. I wanted to do it, but there were some things um, where my dad told me, hey, girls don't do that. <laughs> so, um, my, it was in my mind that I could do it, but I did yeah. not actually begin until I was 42. Wow. And how many years have you been doing it since? 18 and a half years. Wow, that is phenomenal. That is yep. such an inspiration. And I, I can actually uh, resonate with you, uh, with your words, because when I was a little girl, I said to my mom, there was a friend of mine in my class and she did karate. And I went home and I said to my mom, I want to do karate. And my mom almost had a heart attack. She said, what? Because in those days, girls weren't allowed to do karate. She said, you are not doing karate. It's for boys. Yeah. So I had to put it on the ice until I was in my 30s. <laughs> so I understand completely how you felt. <laughs> but we got there. We started at least. <laughs> we, did. we did. So Kim, please share with us the types of martial arts that you do. I know you are fluent in, a, in many. Uh, there's jiu-jitsu, there's Bra Brazilian jiu-jitsu, there's karate. Would you explain to the audience the difference between those and which types of martial arts you do? Okay, so um, the fifth dan or degree is um, in the karate um, slash kickboxing. Um, it is a stand up and it is um, devised of kicks, um, uh, punches, um, knees is basically a stand up type movement. And yes. Ketsuko can either be standing or to the ground. So it's attacking a joint to control, you know, your opponent. Um, wrist locks, knee locks, any, any joint that twist and turn in the opposite direction. So it can either start someone grab you and you take their finger, bending it back or taking their, ear and twisting it or <laughs> or something to <laughs> and it goes all the way down around, you know so doing your your um opponent or uh, yeah. if you want to throw um someone who's attacked you in a self-defense so it's more of a self-defense um brazil is the gentle art <laughs> but i it's like it's gentle art where you see it um in, in lights, but in the background, it's like you're practicing murder because <laughs> <laughs> I love it's, that. It's a it's a ground. It starts on the on your feet, but you want to take your opponent to the ground. Um, in the way that the end game to jujitsu is, you finishing by choking your your opponent out, or yeah. you're taking the joints of your body and taking them in the way that they're not meant to, <laughs> to go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was, when you were saying you're planning a murder, I thought of the Rhea Neka strangle. <laughs> yes. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What a what a oh, oh. what a figure four. <laughs> right. Someone's gonna say ouch. So there's tapping yeah. and I do competitive um jujitsu. Wow. So your has to tap, right? This is either a verbal tap, ow, okay, yeah. tap, or they're tapping you to let you know mm-hmm. you you got me. And, you know, you shake hands and you were the better person. <laughs> but um, I do um, high level um, competition. So I've yeah. actually people like, OK, I'm going to fight it. I'm going to fight it. I'm going to fight it. And they're out. <laughs> <laughs> or, or audience, please, if you can't breathe anymore, just step out. <laughs> or, or something, pop, you know, and, you know, they're <laughs> stretching and. They're bringing ice in. So it's just yeah. interesting and rewarding because it's a game of chess. Like I said, I, I love it. It's the longest, not because I was a slow learner, because there's so much. You know, you want to practice safety. You want to make sure that you're doing something, um, the, the technique right and practicing. You know, there's a risk of hurting your, yes. your partner's. Yes. Yes, we, we do, when we do jiu-jitsu, uh, at, obviously when we're training, we don't hurt our partners, we'll choke and everything, but we yeah. won't go full full on because you don't want to hurt your partner. But I mean, Kim, a competition is something else. Yeah. That is, you know, that is uh, full contact, you know, just going at it. But I've heard a few pops in my life, let me tell you. <laughs> And you learn so much about your body because you never knew how, you know, when you, when you learn how to manipulate the joints and how to stretch and how to counter a certain mm-hmm. attack, it is just phenomenal how the human body works because for every attack there is a counter. But yes. uh, that's very really interesting. I, I just think you are just amazing. I commend you on going that far and on, you know, competing on that high level. And you were world champion twice. Yes. Would you like uh, to share with the audience in which uh, martial art you were world champion? And, you know, how did that work? How was it? How did you enjoy that? What does it feel like? Okay. So it feels like it's this, you, you, I, I did it and it's something that I, I've done. So I don't wear it around. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a world champion two times oh. over. Ah, ha, ha. So it's, it doesn't define who I am. It goes at the top of the resume. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I fit. I've, I've done this. And I'm able to, to pass on that skill set. Um, yes. Just building up to it. Um, and how did I do it? So I'm able to pass that along. The first one, a brown belt. Um, in jiu-jitsu so they're both in jiu-jitsu um, I was a belt and it came I was studying um, I knew one day I would become a, a black belt so I started training with um, a couple world champions um, and underbelt well underbelt um, world champions so I wanted to perfect my skills as a practitioner, um, I had come off of an injury um, that was kind of devastating or not completely devastating because by the grace of God, I, you know, I'm still here, but injured my neck, my neck, the, your neck, one of the, the things that you need. In, in yes. <laughs> so I, you know, I heard my coach tell someone else that you know, you know, she's she's through. She's she probably won't compete in, in jujitsu anymore. Older, you know. He didn't mean for me to hear it, but um, I, you know, to this day, um, he doesn't know that I heard it, and um, it was very hurting um, to me. So, as I was training um, uh, with those those ladies. Um, who brought me, it was a challenge to get over that, uh, that feeling of being hurt. And yeah. you know, 
And I knew that I had some restrictions in my body, just getting over that. Um, I knew that I could still compete, but I can compete at someone who was within my age group, mm-hmm. who were also um, training very hard. It's not yes. like oh, we're at a certain age, we're going to, you know, haha, I'm going to you know these women are like com- compete at a very high level yeah. so yeah <laughs> right. they mean business <laughs> <laughs> so, so the first one was getting over that adversity or that challenge of being injured okay mm-hmm. and the second one came at as I was a became a black belt so I was a black belt so I was um the challenge was competing as a black belt and getting over that adversity. You know, how, how good are you as a black belt? Yeah. So very both um, rewarding, but yeah. to, to me, it's not a badge of honor. It was just something that um, made me feel good because I was able to, to complete those challenges. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you, you went, even though you knew your neck was still, you know, uh, maybe a little bit stiff, a bit hurt, let Mm -hmm. me ask him, how did you mentally prepare yourself for that Jiu-Jitsu World Championship, knowing that, you know, you had an injury with your neck? How did you overcome that fear? I actually watched a movie the other day. I think it was about a basketball player. Uh, I think the movie's name is Just Right, but W-R-I-G-H-T. And he also went through, you know, the healing process. But when he went to the playoffs, he was playing, but he wasn't going full on because he was scared, you know, in his mind, he was thinking, what if his knee gives in again? And as you mentioned, now that you competed, you know, after having that injury, I was wondering, how did you mentally prepare yourself and say, well, you're going to do this. Everything's going to be fine because hurting your neck is a big thing, especially when you do jiu-jitsu because they mm-hmm. are out at your neck, especially they want to put you in that joke gold. So, yeah, to rewind just a little bit, okay, so the yeah. injury came um, like in the beginning of 2017, mm. okay, February 2017, and the actual – um, competition was August of 2018. Oh. So it was big. It wasn't a quick recovery. No, it was, yeah. it was um, like thousands of dollars worth of chiropractic care. So when I started training, it was still an ish- issue. I was still, in, you know, seeing a chiro- chiropractor. Uh, so being hurt, you know, you always hold back because you're not going to perform like you, you should. So, yes. um, you're, you're like protecting that, that error, error area. Um, so mentally <clears throat> we went through a strength and conditioning, which I hadn't thought about and I wasn't sure I could do that, but, um, the young lady, she said, oh, come on, you know, Miss Kim, you can do that. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I, I tried. You know, I was able yeah. to, conditionings and my body res- responded. So I started to get, a, you know, a little definition in my arms and, you know, the, the definition in my legs. So I, yeah. I was becoming a little stronger. So Very good. Very, very good. So what stood out for you with the first world championship and what, what was your favorite part of the first one and the second one where you competed against the black belts, you know, when you were a black belt, what was your favorite part of each championship? Um, I think it's the, the discipline, you know, there's a, of course there's rigorous, you know, training, like repetition, lots of um, sparring, you know, at different temples, um, control breathing you know because uh, your heart beats faster <laughs> in, in competition yes. you have to learn how to breathe um so i think it was the discipline mm. and getting results the desired um, results that, that you you want okay um yeah. and and eating 
Um, yeah. And so that when you eat right and you work out and, you know, you get the desired results. I think that. Beautiful. That part. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I was listening to you earlier and you were describing, you know, the martial arts that you do. The, you were letting the audience know what degrees you are. And you ended with a wonderful phrase and you said, but above all of that, I'm a Christian. Yes. And that, you know, I was thinking when you spoke about getting your injury and you still went and you still won the championship and you went again, even though you heard someone say you might not compete again, you didn't hold on to the words of whoever that was your coach. You mm -hmm. held on to the word of God because you had faith that God would heal you. He would put you in the right hands of the right doctors and he would see you through. And he proved himself to be faithful both yeah. world championships. So for me, that takes precedence over all things because I can see your heart. I hear your heart. We can really achieve nothing without God. And it also shines through in the, in the interview with Randy. So I want to commend you on being a mom that has raised her son well and a woman of faith. You are a woman of faith, and that shines to me. That means the most. So I, I just want to thank you for being that light to the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now the training is rigorous. There's a diet involved. You have to learn how to breathe. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's physiotherapists involved. There's chiropractors involved. What part is the favorite, you know, of training? Do you like to do uh, sparring the most? Do you like to do, um, you know, grappling the most? Or do you like the fitness? What is your favorite part of getting ready for a tournament? I like the, the grappling, like getting out of um, certain situations. Yeah, you, yeah. Your, your weak spots. Yeah. Uh, like mine was... Always, if someone passed me or go to my my um, right side, okay, that was my weak side. So you begin to have what if um, scenarios where you drill and yeah. then you and you you spar, okay? Because now you've diminished or have gotten rid of that that fear of your your spot. Okay, mm -hmm. where um, the mystery is taken out. Okay, I've, I've been in a situation before when it's going on, I can perform better. If someone flattens me out, you know, okay, breathe. If you've been here before, you know, it's a failed situation. Um, you actually do something else or make them think about something else to yes. readjust. Yes, so that's what I like doing is the grappling, um, drilling yeah. uh, part. Yes. I love that answer. And, uh, you know, to me, Jiu Jitsu is quite like problem solving. Yes. And I always, yeah, and I always tell people, you know, if one thing is you when you're a leader, you have to solve problems. Mm -hmm. And also when you do Jiu Jitsu, you have to anticipate your yes. opponents move because their body moves in a certain way because they are doing that. They want to get you in a certain, you know, uh, either arm bar or a, or a strangle hold or they want to lie on top of you and tire you out or smother you even. Sometimes they do that. Um, mm -hmm. So problem solving. So I am guessing that you like the problem solving, you know, how to get out of that, uh, that hold. Exactly, because that's what – my um, job was um, before I retired. I'm re I'm retired um, from an oil company and wow. um, into logistics. So logistics, yeah. out of problem solving. So yeah. on the you get in a certain situation, you know, it's yeah. it's a bait and switch on the ground, <laughs> and you have to think very quickly. Like you said, yes. it's, it's, space. what if you know? And there's you know, if you if you play board chess, you know the best chess players. The further that they can think out ahead, the different combination out of head, the better that they are. 
and I and I love that. I saw the movie that I think it was called The Gambit. I think that was the name of it, where the the lady she, um, she was a champion chess player, and she was able to to see the board in her head and the different movements. So that's how chess. That's how I call it human chess. Like yes, human. I loved it. So the way that they move their body, um, they can set you right. They're moving, <laughs> grabbing on to certain things. So you think of all the possibilities that can happen. First of all, don't put your hands on me. Don't don't grab my collar. <laughs> don't hold my <laughs> hip. Um, yeah. Don't start, you know, uh, putting your your feet on me because I can go. I could be swept or anything like that. So that's what you start. That's the problem solving it, and it's fun. Aha! I got yeah. you. So now that you've moved me here, you think that you have me, but I have you. So, you know, you yeah, have to just wait have for it. I'm going to get you now. <laughs> back and forth. And it's, I like watching the, the, the higher belts, black belts. Mm -hmm. It's like a, it's, it's a constant, you know, and they're doing this back and forth. You know, he does this, I do this, I grab, you no, know, and, and it looks so pretty it's like poetry emotion um, beautiful i loved what you said now you said it was poetry in motion you know mm -hmm. martial arts to me like to you looking mm -hmm. at jiu-jitsu and even doing it and going through those moves it's so beautiful yes it's beautiful to watch it really is an art it really yeah. is a skill. And now that you've explained that you came from an oil company where you were doing problem solving, it makes so much more sense because I think jiu-jitsu has a lot to do also with the way you think. You have to be able to think fast-paced and to mm -hmm. have the options, you know, readily available. And that comes through constant drilling, as you said, and training and training and training so that you build that muscle memory so that your body naturally goes into those moves. Definitely. Agreed. And that's the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, Kim, tell me, Kim, what has martial arts unlocked in you as an individual? What has it meant to you personally? Has it built your self-confidence? Has it opened up, you know, things about yourself that you didn't know were there? What has it changed in you? It changed in me. I, I wasn't the, the type of person who would go up and I felt uncomfortable in front of people, like going up, giving um, speeches, public speaking um, yeah. was an issue for me because I'm, I'm naturally shy. So being a martial artist gives you that confidence. Um, so I'm still shy, but I don't mind getting up in, in, in front of people now. It's using my, I, I'm still working on, it's still a work in progress. You know, I've taught um, and I'm able to, to teach what I, I know, right? Yeah. It's there, the shyness, the fear um, has touched you. Absolutely, absolutely. I remember, and, and you know, when you do, you'll know, when you do your first kata ever, we call it showtime. Yes. The first time I ever had to do my first kata, I was going <laughs> like this. <laughs> and it, it was been and shotan, and I felt my arms go up, but I felt my legs <laughs> were all jittery because you are so worried. You know, everybody there is so experienced. You're so worried about what they think. And then... As you just get used to it and you get exposed to that more and more, after a while, you don't worry about that anymore. Your focus is on doing the move right. And <laughs> so it does definitely build our confidence. I'm so happy to hear it was the same with you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Next question. How can leaders benefit from the adversities and the challenges in life? Because none of us want adversity. None of us... You know, want to say, oh, yes, a trial, yes, a tribulation. But what is the positive point of all those things that we sometimes go through as leaders? Um, overcoming, when you overcome adversities, you're able yeah. to become better, right? You become a better leader, a, a better um, teacher, 
I mean, you've been there, you've done that. You're a better goal setter, mm-hmm. right? Um, you see the vision, mm-hmm. you make it plain, <laughs> and you're able to, to um, pass that on um, to the people um, that you lead over or the role model for. Yeah. I see you. I agree with you completely. And uh, goals are very important and making the vision clear is also a biblical thing. You know, it's a biblical principle where there's yes. no vision, people perish. And yes. I really, I really feel that you are a, you're a servant leader because mm-hmm. I've heard you now and you have said taking that knowledge and carrying it over, yes. giving it to someone else. And at the end of the day, Martial arts is self-development. It's mm-hmm. edifying to your, yourself as an individual, to the group, to the people that grow with you. And it's a never-ending learning curve and it's a never-ending um, a growth process. Yes. Because once you start, you can't imagine stopping. Correct. Correct. And I think yes. I always do it. Always, I'm always a, a student of the arts. Before we are I- always students. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We are always students, like you said before, we are the teacher. We always learn something new. And it doesn't always, it's not just always the higher up. Sometimes a little child can teach us something, exactly. you know, a principle or a truth. Mm-hmm. Always learning. Always taking what you can, you can take and, and build on, on that. Absolutely, absolutely. How important do you perceive a strong mindset to be if you want to be successful? How important is a strong mindset? Is I think it's very in, in, important because uh, we just touched upon it a few moments ago of uh, getting past those nerves, right? Yeah. I think you have to live live in the moment mm-hmm. and stand your zone. And when I when I say that, you have to find that that area yeah. mentally, physically, where your body can talk yes. to your mind without being interrupted. Yes, right? I so love that. In the moment, in the moment, present, and don't break, um, don't break it until your deed is done until it's over like the beginning out of your breathing you find that where okay this is my zone i have to perform the you know i have to be strong and i have to be fluent and not make that error so it's done when it's done and you breathe and you come out with the breath and you stand there and you, and you wait you know for the, your your um the, the, to give you your score yeah yeah that self talk that breathing do you do meditation do you practice meditation do you listen to music i listen to i do all of the above i do a, like what's called a vibrational um sounds um and I listen to sounds that, that, that activate my, my focus, um, yeah. my body, to help heal my body, um, yeah. and tell my body that it's, it's time to per- perform um, yeah. these actual sounds that are, are made um, from a lady. Her name is um, Sheila Kennedy, and she has a, a sports um, bag of, of vibrational sounds for athletes and um I, so i get prepared um that way where my, my focus is activated you know i, I have a sound that that helps me with my strength and conditioning um one that generates my body to deal with the trauma that my body takes um mm-hmm. one that that helped me prepare to get into competition to help me get into that um, if I'm work out, they, they help me to to work out. Um, and they uh, listen to one that brings me out of that um, that zone. But I also 
Christian music. I like Christian rap. You know, I like a little Lecrae. <laughs> yeah. I love Lecrae. <laughs> yeah. It's a funny story uh, with him. I, I was volunteering at, at, at church. Um, we had a conference. Yeah. And um, I, I greet. I'm a greeter. I like hugging. I like, you know, speaking to people individually. So <laughs> they wanted to give the, the parking lot people a break. They say, no, we need to give the so that they can come in and get some water and, and eat some lunch. So they put me out and, you know, they give me those little wine. I'm so excited. I feel like, you know, I'm in Star Wars, right? Give me a jacket. Yeah. I have no idea. No clue. <laughs> <laughs> so this car pulled up and, yeah. um, and it was a young man there. They, they had somebody who had the experience. I was just there with the, with the lightsaber, right? And um, yeah. he says, he says, the guy, he pointed him to the VIP section. He says, the guy who was in the passenger seat was Lecrae. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to run after him. <laughs> I wouldn't have been a <laughs> Sing this song, you know, just break down a few lyrics, you know. Just spit a few. <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly, here comes the servant leadership again. I mean, you you were helping there and you were showing, you know, the, the integrity that you have, the, the humility. What I find so refreshing about you is you've achieved so much, Kim. You know, we look up to you. We, we are inspired by you. We see your beautiful heart and you are so humble, and you're so natural. And I find that refreshing. Like, that is just amazing. I love that. Thank you. That's so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And I was thinking to put in this question just for fun. And mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you if you could spend, you know, if you had the opportunity to spend your day with your favorite leader, your favorite role model, someone that you really would love to have a chat with, who would it be and where would you go just for, for fun? Um, I, 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 I'm not a, a, a political person or, a, yeah. or struck. I've been following this young lady on, on Facebook. Her name is Sandra Sanchez and she goes by Sandra San Karate. Yeah, I saw a movie. I saw a YouTube videos. Woo! Like, I watched the way that she. Um, she's a, actually she's a gold medalist at, at oh. the Olympic at karate in the Olympics, and just to, to to see her, the way that she trains, the way that she breaks down her katas, um, yeah. just the functional things that she does for her. Then she show you why she does. You know. Yeah. She's jumping up on these boxes and, um, you know, her, her kata where she's jumping up and coming down, you know, into her. It's in that position. <laughs> yes. And I was like, well, she does a lot of functional work and she does it over and over and over again. She's just not sitting there practicing her, her kata from, you know, just over and over in different directions, you know, which, you know, that's the way. <laughs> And I, I would practice my kata, you know, that, not to get the experience, but she's actually doing functional patterns. So I yeah. would um, spend time speaking to her about that, you know, functional patterns. And I think we would go um, one of those jumping things, you know, the, the yeah. big room <laughs> and just yes. talk about what do you think about, you know, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but I would love to, to pick her brain, you know, her thought pattern, and she has that discipline. And I can sit and I can watch her all day, you know, just breaking down, you know, what she's doing. Um, yeah. She's eating right um, and yeah. she's just doing the right thing. So I, I never see her limp around, you know, like, okay, I'm not going to going to um, practice this day because, you know, I think I tweaked myself um, mm -hmm. day before. And that's important to me 
being an aged athlete because mm-hmm. you have about recovery and not getting to the part where you have to to um, to heal or to to nurture injury. So these functional mm-hmm. patterns she's doing um, are easy on her body and her body performs and she's preventing injury, but I'm quite sure she's doing some, some other type of recovery as well. Well, that is a phenomenal answer. I mean, I've seen Sandra Sanchez. I've seen her at the Olympics, uh, you know, online. I mm-hmm. see, I've seen her rigorous training, the way she trains, the yes. dedication, that motivation. I mean, she does not get up on a Monday and say, oh, you know, I'm not going to do this or that. She just goes and goes and goes. No wonder, you know, she's so good. But, mm-hmm. I mean, you had a wonderful answer. I think that would be just a fantastic day. And, you know, Kim, you never know. It might just happen. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm that one putting a like on your, <laughs> your video. <laughs> I'm going to tag Sandra Sanchez. <laughs> she must watch this. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love Banner. Oh my gosh. She is a, she's just a wonderful young, young lady. And just to have that, um, she doesn't know she's a, she's a role model of mine. She's a role. She's a true role model of, of, of girls. Yeah. She's, she's, She's staying in that, that zone uh, where, where you want to be as an athlete, you know, as a, just as a person, you know, you have that zone, you have something to do, you don't do it. <laughs> Absolutely. That's the right mindset to have. That's the lovely attitude that she gives to us and you as well. You are a role model to us. Because you've shown us that nothing is impossible. You've shown us even if there are certain things that count against you, you still went, you overcame that mindset, you you, uh, went full, full on, and you did it, you did it, you achieved. And we want to know what is next for you. What are you currently uh, training for? Are there any upcoming tournaments? I'm training a little different. I saw the woman... Um, King of, uh, about a month ago um, when it went out um, with Viola Davis yeah. and those was about women warriors, right? Um, they protected the king. They went out and did the, the fighting. They, and I was thinking, wow, they went and, and, they, and they fought these battles and they yeah. got the deep I said, that's the way I want to be unstoppable on the max. Yeah. I want to, to, to keep going. I want to, every moment that I step on the mat, I want to be unstoppable. Okay. I'm taking things a, a little more. Not that I wasn't serious on the mat. I'm making those moments count to be unstoppable yeah. to my I'm going to be a different competitor the next time I meet me. But what's coming up next, I want to compete a little bit more. I want to compete in Nogi um, Worlds on a, on a high level and back to uh, my Master Worlds. Um, and I also want to do some Opens. Um, I want to compete internationally, um, I want, you know, across in the seas to compete Um internationally and i think i want to do a one more high level karate tournament i've never done an international karate tournament i've done locals i've done regional i've done nationals but i've never done a national so i want to put that on my list of things to do yeah You're going to do it and you're going to shine and we're going to be there cheering for you because we believe in you and we know God has given you these skills and these capabilities. And I mean, you have on the side, you know, on your side. So uh, what else would you need? (laughs) (laughs) Tell me, Kim, I mean, our time together has just flown by. I have no idea where the time went. I, you know, we are at the last question. I can't believe it. 
So I would like to ask you, do you have any words of wisdom for the audience to leave them with, to encourage them, to motivate them with? I always, we talked about the zone. Um, yeah. Life's no different. Um, I develop a mantra when I was actually um, training for my first world title and it's getting there from here mm -hmm. uh, inch by inch you know I wanted to be there I wanted to be over with but I'll get there from from here the things that I do in this moment okay and the things that people do in that moment you, you in the present okay not the past the present not the future right it's the, yeah. the press concentrate on getting there inch by inch and treating your treating it like your gut right mm. especially being in the age of of the internet and we're so inundated with so much information all the information oh. is not <laughs> not for you like your gut you know do a gut check right yeah what's good for your gut because it's all not not good for you you know if you're if you like football can you actually get out there and play football so why watch videos you know yeah. on how to play the video so you take in what's good for you you know you okay there's your teams playing watch watch football right yeah just take in the things that you're that you the you of you can tolerate and go from yeah. there that is fantastic advice absolutely phenomenal and we just want to say thank you from myself personally and from the meticulous moments audience thank you for adding so much value for sharing with us your leadership journey you know inch by inch never giving up going at it just believing in yourself following god's heart and just excelling in everything that you do you are an amazing person and we are very proud of you and we're going to cheer you on Yes, thank you so very much for the opportunity. It's a pleasure. And to the Meticulous Moments audience, we are going to make Kim's contact details available after the session. Follow her on social media, network with her, and, uh, you know, cheer her on on this journey. And, you know, always just share her posts and let's be there for her as a little community and lift her up because we can see as you rise, as you rise, Kim, you lift the rest of us as well. So thank you. And we will see you in the next session. Have a lovely day. You, you too.